Um, but this is your first Ace Comic Con. How's it going? I'm having a great time. Honestly, I love meeting all you guys. It's great to see the enthusiasm for the show. Love you, love you too. I love him too. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling, Kiernan? Um, it's great. I got to meet Ross Lynch today. I was a big fan of his. No, it's actually really fun. It's really cool to see everyone come out. We get kind of up in our little bubble up in Vancouver filming the show to actually see fans and meet fans. It's really, really gratifying. It's why we do this, so it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, and the show is so timeless. It, it is pretty easy, to, I'm sure, to get caught in that bubble of just being there. Uh, so Especially for Kiernan, because she literally works all the time. <laughs> I believe that. I do live on set. I've considered sleeping there once or twice, but I haven't. It's I mean, a little creepy. I know. <laughs> I know. To each is creepy. To each his own. Yeah. Get it. Um, so you play Sabrina Spellman. I do. Just in case you didn't know. Thank you um, for the reminder. You're welcome. I have been uh, on set for two days. I forgot. <laughs> So this character was originally created for those out there who are like hardcore Sabrina fans in 1962. None of us were born. No offense for those who were born in 1962. Um, but you play with a little bit of a twist, thanks to the interpretation from Roberto Aguirre Sacasa. Um, yeah, you can clap for that. It's pretty amazing. Um, which spawned from Afterlife with Archie into this amazing, amazing source material. And of course, a lot of us who were born saw Melissa Joan Hart in 1996 as Sabrina the Teenage Witch. For you, with a slightly different interpretation, how did you prepare for this role? Did you draw any original Archie comics that came out? Or did you just like, you're like, look, Roberto did his thing. I'm going straight to the graphic novel. We're good with this. Yeah, I went pretty much straight to the graphic novel because I knew that's kind of where our show was going to be sort of the most similar to. Um, I had about three months before I started filming, so I was able to really kind of build Sabrina's world, ask Roberto a lot of questions, and get to know her as best I could to be as comfortable in her voice as I could before the show got going. And then honestly, episode after episode, I learned something new about my character every single episode, and, and we're filming, we just finished filming part three, which is crazy, we're on to part four. Um, and I feel like I know my character better than, better than ever, because the more that you live these experiences with your character, the more we film, the more your character goes through, I feel like the richer the stories get, the cooler the relationships get. Yeah. So it just kind of keeps getting better and better. So you can kind of prep to a certain extent and then you just sort of put your faith in the, in the show and it just keeps going and keeps thriving. Yeah, it, 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 it's evolved in such a beautiful way mm -hmm. from the first time we see your characters. But what's your personality in real life? Not Harvey Kinkle, man. Um, not a bad thing. You don't but think so? You were vastly different. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and it's been said in, in a really very complimentary way because you are able to play Harvey in such... Because Harvey is sweet and naive and just... I'm totally not sweet. Just adorable. <laughs> and, you know, do you feel like you're able to bring a little Ross Lynch to Harvey or that maybe Harvey is rubbed off on you a little bit? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of both. Um, I think you'll be cast for anything if you possess a certain energy that they're looking for in the character. Yeah. So I think regardless of however good of an actor that you are, you'll always have a bit of you in it. Yeah. You can't really escape yourself fully. Um, so I do think there's a bit of me and Harvey, for sure. Um, actually, the, one of our, one of the guys on set came up to me recently. He was like, he actually said it. He was like, I mean, Harvey's kind of like you, like, or you're like kind of like Harvey. And I kind of, I kind of took it as a compliment because I was like, I guess I'm doing my job right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, sometimes when I'm off set, actually, I'll say, I'll say lines that Harvey will say, as if it. Like scripted lines. It's just normal. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't really know why, but sometimes, sometimes I'll, I'll literally say a line that Harvey has said. What would Harvey do? What would Harvey do? What would Harvey do? That's just. Yeah. I just went through your head. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're being these characters all the time, I think that, that inevitably you're just gonna. 
you're just gonna sort of learn from them in yeah. a sense, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I gotta know, for both of you, this is, again, a very big departure. Uh, for a lot of us, we didn't know what to expect. Uh, I had read the graphic novels, because I, I work in comics, but a lot of people had not read The Chilling Adventures. When you first got the chaos scripts, um, like, the first time you're like, hail Satan. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> what? You know, what was, what was your reaction the first time you got these scripts? How do I tell my Catholic grandma was actually my first reaction. And she loves the show. Surprise, surprise, absolutely loves it. But the, it's funny, the first script I read was not nearly as Satan-y, if you will. I like um, the term. I like the term. It, uh, it's definitely gone more in, in that sort of area and has delved more into sort of the relig religion, institutions, all that kind of stuff. But the first script I read, it was still set in the 60s. And it was still, like, quite sort of fun and upbeat. And I think that as the show sort of hit its stride in the writer's room, they realized that the darker twist was sort of what people were wanting and what was kind of uh, the most fun aspect of it. So that's sort of the route it went. But when I first read it, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be fun. And then, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> it did get increasingly dark. Yeah, very like, As it went along. It was like, it started off and it was like, hail Satan. You're like, oh, okay, wow. Really? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> but then, like, eventually it got to cannibalism and we were all like, oh, we're really going there. Oh, okay. It's only episode like, eight and we're already doing cannibalism? All right. Sweet. I mean, just get to the point. Yeah. yeah. Why not? <laughs> so, the creator of the original comic, which we've talked about a couple times now, has himself compared the source material to Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist, and The Omen. And the writers of the show are obviously huge horror fans, yeah. which is a perfect segue from it getting dark very fast. Were either of you horror fans before you were cast accepting the roles? I did one horror movie a couple years ago called Black Coat's Daughter. Yeah, oh, I thank you. And I was given a humongous uh, list of movies to watch in prep for that movie. So I had kind of become a horror fan because of that. And yeah. I appreciate a good scare, but I think this being that every episode is kind of a new classic horror film homage in a certain way has made me a whole different kind of horror movie fan. 100%. Yeah. I was actually like, I was actually the kid that was always scared of horror films. <laughs> I was the kid who was scared of roller coasters too. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, yeah. I was just sort of like a late bloomer. Um, but now I love them. I'm such a fan. I think the show I, I, like, kind of made me yeah. more into the horror genre because it really shows you all the, um, the creative aspects yeah. of, of the horror genre. Do either one of cool you have a, a favorite horror movie? Um, Shining is an all-time great, I like the in my opinion. Just it kind of makes me laugh, though. I just like things with conspiracy theories, and I can read about what The Shining is actually about. And ten sure. different different articles will say different things, and I really enjoy that. But you know when Jack Nicholson's frozen at the end? That's pretty funny. Does that not make you crack it's up? It's a great gift, though. It's a great it's the meme best gift. now. I love it. Yeah. Do you like Ch uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I like that one. Yeah. I don't know why. Y'all are perfect like, for the show. So perfect for the show. Um, so Chaos has been described by the creator and some critics as an occult coming of age story, um, which you really do see in the evolution of many of the characters on the show, whether it is Prudence, um, whether it is the story um, where we deal with Theo. Um, it, is, it is so beautifully done and so inclusive in such a glorious way. How do you feel, and this is a fan question, so thank you to the fan who gave me this question. How do you feel your characters have evolved since part one? And what are you excited for fans to see in the upcoming part three? Well, I definitely think that Sabrina has grown up very rapidly since we first met her. We, we met her on her 16th birthday, pretty much, and she's gone through quite a bit in the 
proceeding couple months. So it, it, her, I think for Sabrina, she's just come into her own power. She's realized that she can be badass, she can be powerful, she can be strong and stand up for herself, and she finds herself in situations where she has to do that. And she's made a lot of mistakes, and she's gone through a lot of complicated sort of decisions, but I think in the next season, we're gonna see her become the most evolved witch that she has been, mm -hmm. uh, and she's realizing her power as a young woman and everyone around her, I think, is also growing and changing. And I think that sort of just this new level of weight has sort of been put on all the characters because of all the shenanigans that have happened. So everyone's kind of a little bit more on yeah. in a lot of ways. And this next season, I would say, is just every episode feels like a huge episode. Every episode is dramatic. Every, every episode has an event. Something massive is always happening. Always happening. And there's a few, there's a few new characters, too. Ooh. There's a few new characters. I'm ready for that. Yeah. What about, how do you feel like Harvey has evolved? Because I feel like Harvey, Harvey had a hard row to yeah. toe in these last couple parts. He didn't sign up for any of this. He's just, <laughs> like, thrown into a whirlwind of, yeah. of chaos no. because his girlfriend happened to be a witch. Literally. I know I feel bad. Yeah, jeez. It's all your fault. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um... No, but I think it's kind of a similar story for Harvey. I think it's, I think his story is kind of a coming of age story, um, and he's sort of learning like, yeah, I guess how to be a man and how to like think on his own and become, um, and like what he believes, yeah, and and to make decisions for himself. Okay. Uh, but uh, but yeah, a lot of stuff happens this season, a lot of stuff, a lot of relationship stuff for Harvey in this season. Oh. Um, but it's always kind of been about relationships for Harvey, like whether it be Sabrina or or um, his brother, or his dad, or his brother, or his yeah. dad, and, and then then um, Rosalind. Mm, Ros. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> huh? So, Karen, it's pretty well known that you are allergic to cats. We've had this yeah. conversation. For all of you who love cats, um, for me and Kiernan, they're hairy fur balls of death. Um, there is nothing that can save us. It has been a challenge because Salem is one of those key characters that we know and love. And, yeah. you know, we've seen everyone else hold Salem except for uh -huh. you, which is fine. They've worked a way around it. But I think I'm growing out of the allergy, though. Ooh. Yeah, because the other day, because I was taking antihistamines for a while, and then I didn't want to do that anymore. And then I started hanging around the cat, and I wasn't getting any reactions for the first time in a really long time. Before I'd get hives on my face, it was horrible. It was a whole thing. And just the other day, someone came up to me and they said, so, do you want to try holding the cat in this take? I was like, sure, I guess so. I mean, I got this Comic-Con thing, so if my face explodes, that's fine. And I did it, I picked him up twice, and I didn't have that like crazy reaction that I used to. So yeah. I think we might be seeing more of Sabrina and Salem together because we can work together now. Are you saying Salem is growing on you? Yeah, Salem is literally growing on me. Yeah, isn't that nice? <laughs> That's amazing. My body's like, okay. How many cats do they have now? We've got four main Salems. Four main Salems? Wow. Shaq, do you have a favorite? Uh, Shaq. Shaq's your favorite Yeah, cat. Shaq's my favorite. He's the biggest one, right? Yeah. He's lazy, huh? N yeah, he gives a great performance. <laughs> <laughs> if either one of you could pick a familiar, Ooh. like an actual familiar, uh, what would it be? Probably my dog, Frankie. I knew you were gonna say yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, she's is my she's like a giant hundred pound Salem, basically. <laughs> um, but if I had to pick another familiar, I feel like I might go with a bird. Ooh. I was just thinking yeah, that. Yeah, there'd be something really cool about having a bird kind of just swoop in. But also, like, if you could pick anything, like, why not a snow leopard? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Life motto. Like, that'd be pretty sweet. It's better than like a, a werewolf, I guess. Yeah. A werewolf? Uh, even a griffin, like. I mean, Griffin I can pick anything. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That could, Griffin could wreck shop on anyone who was trying to get at you. Because right. it can fly, but it's also a cat. I might go with a panda because I saw That's there's sweet. this, there's this like YouTube the video of pandas falling. Apparently, they're super clumsy animals, and it's this adorable compilation of just pandas being super clumsy, and I feel like that would be a really funny sidekick to have. <laughs> I really like this. I feel I like, like it would it. also be loving. The right. pandas would also be yeah, loving. You'd always have them. a snuggle buddy. Oh. Yeah. That sounds actually really nice. 
All right, so let's talk fashion because yeah. another fan question came through. Is like one of the things when we were chatting about this. One of the things that I love about the show is that the fashion is also timeless. Mm -hmm. Not just the setting, not just the kind of the atmosphere and the culture, but each and every character has their own unique yeah. fashion that really displays their persona. Yeah. Yeah. Ross has been in the same outfit since episode one. That's what no, I've been thinking. I mean, the whole time I mean, she's talking about fashion, she's I like, mean, fashion. But, I'm like, but, yeah, totally. Great corduroys and a flannel in yeah. every episode. I don't think that he's changed. But also, uh, probably the, Harvey's I don't think so. persona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it totally fits the character. <laughs> it totally fits the character. No complaints there. But sometimes it's also good I go for the, the coal mines, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's good for the coal mines yeah, yeah. and fighting demons. I remember, though, when I, got, <laughs> when I finally got on set for the third part, I like went into my wardrobe fitting. And Angus, our costume designer, was like, well, buddy, I'd love to say we have a whole new wardrobe for you, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's cool, man. It's all right. Meanwhile, like, Michelle's in, like, Gowns. crazy, oh. like, expensive. Yeah. I mean, it's Michelle Gomez. Her lipstick's like $1,000. Right? <laughs> Michelle Gomez is queen. Yeah, Michelle she Gomez is the queen. She's queen. Yeah. She's queen. Um, well, I want to ask you this question, but now it doesn't make... No, no, no. I'm going to ask it. I'm fashion. This is going yeah, straight to Kenneth. She gets to wear some cool stuff. Have you had an influence on the character style? Because uh, to be honest, there's this beautiful scene where you, are just, you, you Sabrina, is deciding what you're going to wear. There's this whole new attitude going on. It's, and it's a little bit of nod to Melissa Joan Hart, who had a lot of those scenes where she was changing her clothes constantly. You know, have you had any impact or influence on your character style? I think so. I think uh, I, I, I feel like I know my character really well, and I love playing her. And whenever I step into a fitting, if there's something that doesn't quite feel right, um, I, I always speak up and I always say, I don't really think Sabrina would wear this. Or if I think, mm. oh, I think Sabrina, she's growing, she's changing, she should have an edgier look. Um, I always give my, my two cents as to what I think she would be wearing. And it's, it's always turned out super fun because I feel like it's, the clothes are very reflective of where the characters are in their journey, hugely. And you can make that that much more pronounced with a cool look. So I definitely am quite talkative in my fittings. <laughs> Well, I will have to say one of my favorite outfits was the gown from the masquerade scene. Which oh my god, I had no say in that. That was perfect. That perfection. Was amazing. But do you have a favorite outfit that oh you've worn god. on the show? I really like her red prom dress that she wore. Yeah, was that yeah. that wasn't prom? That was like a Valentine's homecoming Day dance. dance yeah. Valentine's Day dance yeah. red dress. That was, was fun. really great. Super fun. And that then was also, such a fun day on set. Yeah, that was. We literally were like playing music on and off set. That was yeah, amazing. Yeah, just dancing all day. That was so fun. So yeah. it's the memory attached to it. Honestly, I just like when I'm wearing clothes in the show because <laughs> it gets cold Yo. in the Vancouver woods when you're in nothing but a slip getting baptized. So it's just really nice to we have proper heat and warmth <laughs> on your body when you're in cold working conditions. I don't That's think all I ask for. The first episode, though, they put you in a nightgown and they make you run through the woods. I know, <laughs> barefoot. And it was like 40 degrees out? Yeah. Yeah. I'll take running in heels over running barefoot. So. I mean, I feel like. Tough cookie. Anyone. Clearly. No, I don't think anyone thought about the fact of how cold it would be in Vancouver during that scene because you, we, would, we wouldn't have known that you were freezing. It was also 4.30 a.m. probably. Yeah. Kiernan has this thing, too, where she goes blue, and then she can't say her lines anymore. <laughs> like, literally, her, like, her lips, like, are blue. The, it, like, it happened my, in the pilot. mouth stops working. Yeah, it was like, pretty funny. Like, fully stops working. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't happen anymore, though. No? I think well, I better body heat. Oh, okay. Become accustomed. Temperature's more regulated now. Oh, good, good. Yeah. So, speaking of... I'm happy for you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, speaking of music, in the final episode, we were graced with this amazing musical number, mm. Masquerade from Phantom of the Opera, which was one of my favorite musicals. It was pretty dope. As a glorious distraction for your father. Yeah, daddy issues. Daddy. Um, daddy issues. And Ross, you've kind of stated that if you were not filming, someone usually has a guitar and we're singing and playing on set all day. Yeah. Is there any chance, because I know there are a lot of people out there who want to know, that you will be bringing your musical talents to the next chapter of Chaos? There, there are actually a few moments of 
I don't know. I don't really want to spoil too much, but there there is a bit of music in the beginning of part three. There's more music in part three than yeah. there is in part two, for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes. Um, I, was in, I think I was in the recording booth almost once an episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. We'll see how far that goes because we're still in part four now, and I still think there are a few more opportunities that can like have music in them. Yeah. So we'll see. Kinko can sing though. <laughs> Can. Spellman can sing. Spellman I forgot your last sing. name for a second. I was like, wait. Spellman well, because it's sing. either Spellman or it's Morningstar. So I was like, wait, which one am I going to use? Or is it hyphenated Spellman Morningstar? Spellman Morningstar. Oh, there you go. Could be that. It That's could a, be that. If your dad wasn't Satan, it'd be a beautiful last name. I know, right? He <laughs> had to spoil it. He really yeah, like didn't it. have to spoil it. Yeah, that's what Satan does, I hear. Um, so random, but I have to ask. What's up? Speaking of talents. Of what? Of talents. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're an amateur tattoo artist. <laughs> and in very, fact, very amateur. I, we, I've seen it. You tattooed your bandmate I know. with a shamrock on his thigh. But I'll tell you um, what, once they got those cameras up, that's the worst tattoo I've ever done. I mean, I was like, I was like, man, was a of lot course. of performance stress right there. You were answering questions. <laughs> yeah. You were trying to tattoo. Oh, uh, yeah, pretty much. You, yeah. No. But I've given better tattoos. And when they, and then I was like, man, they got my worst tattoo on camera. I mean, but it was still a, it was still a cute episode of Inked. Well, was, I'm, I'm happy dope. you enjoyed it. It was, it was dope. Have you had a chance to practice on any of your chaos crew members? No, but I, pr I would love to. Oh. I'd love to, honestly, if anybody wants a tattoo, like, hit me up. Like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> you heard it right here. Um, how often do you get a chance to tattoo? Not very often. Yeah. That's, I'm, like, super, super, super amateur. It is something, though, that I enjoy, and I would like to... I have a few tattoo artist friends, all of which advise me not to get a tattoo machine. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of fun, and I've always liked drawing, and, like, Harvey Kinkle. Yep. Um, so we'll see, how, we'll see how many tattoos I can get through. You know what's funny, actually? I, I had this story. We were signing with a booking agent. My band was signing with a booking agent. And um, before we signed, I was like, we, we had, we, I can't remember how it came about. But essentially, I was like, we'll sign if you let me give you a tattoo. <laughs> so I signed ex F it on a shin. <laughs> <laughs> But it was, that's, that's actually, what he that's wanted. That's what he dope. wanted. I, w I, you, yeah, you, I was going to give him something. I was going to give him like a smiley face or something. But, but he wanted that. Yeah. I mean, give the people what they want. Yeah. Well, we signed. So Speaking of out. giving the people what they want, will there be more music? You mentioned the band. I got to ask. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, yeah. We we're going to release two songs in uh, like two weeks. <laughs> They're sick, too. I think you guys would really like them. There's this one song called A Kiss that... Uh, Maybe I think next weekend I'm flying back to LA to do a music video for, but I feel really I feel really strongly about these two songs. I think Dope. they're gonna be good. Yeah. Dope. I don't know I don't know how either one of you find time for anything. Um, <laughs> so fan question: Are there going to be any more Harbrina mm. moments, or is this it for the couple? Me. I stan Harvey and Roz and Nick and Sabrina. So I'm curious for the fan, but look, man. You and it's like uh, Harvey and Roz and Nick and Sabrina are my joint, but there are some folks who would like to see Harvey and Sabrina back together. Who are obviously out here in the audience right now. We've got a few. I, I think, think, yeah, I think that it's first love. That's the thing, is that Harvey and Sabrina are each other's first loves. And I don't think that throughout the entire series that will ever fully go away. I just don't think it will. I think there's always going to be that past, that that connection that was once there, and I definitely stand Harvey and Roz. I love Nick and Sabrina together, too, but I'm not going to lie, there's definitely moments peppered in there, and I think there always will be that the Harbrina shippers are going to are yeah. gonna like. I love those moments. Yeah, too. They're, they're nice. They're, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I also, I, like you, I, I think the relationships has, like, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll they're see. both in very different places yeah. right okay. now. And I don't think they're meant to be together right now, but that doesn't mean that they can't end up together. Harvey's got to get powers first. Yeah, got to get and it's not Harvey's looking good. powers. <laughs> no, he's still very much so mortal. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean. You're I'm the only one without powers. You really are. Like, you don't yeah. see anybody. No one, no, there's no voices. You don't have any sight. Yeah. I mean, you could draw. Harvey draws. You know what? 
that it, and it has saved the day. It has yeah, saved the day. So I mean, you're right. The drawing has come in handy. Every, right. Everyone is special. a superhero, Harvey. Kinko is a superhero too. Right. Yes. <laughs> a for effort. A for effort. Well, and, and I think that's one of the coolest things about the evolution of the show. When we first meet everyone on the show, they're living their daily lives, 16th birthday is coming up, Halloween is happening, it's great. And then suddenly, at the end of the last part, we've got Prudence going off to like, hunt things down, you've got a spook squad that's about to go to hell. Like, it's so serious, evolution. Mm -hmm. um, what should fans be expecting now that we've gone from everyday high school kids who happen to have a friend who's partly a witch to let's go to hell? <laughs> I mean, the last line of the season was let's go to hell and get my boyfriend back. And I can't say we, we don't try. So <laughs> there's more hell. There's a lot more hell this season. And it's a lot scarier. And the stakes are way higher. Like. I said this for the second part, and I feel like it's very much so true for the third part, too, is that in almost every episode, I fear the death of a character. I really do. I kind of know that I'm not going to die because I'm Sabrina, so I don't think they would do that. I don't know. You don't sound very secure know. in that. But seriously, some episodes I read, oh, my God. Is this... Whew. But seriously, almost every single episode has one of those moments where you think someone's going to go. It's crazy. 100%. Yeah. I, I don't think you should die. I hope That's probably not, not a good idea. I would probably for the best. <laughs> probably for the best. Yeah. I would, would hope that both of you stay. I think so. I th probably. So since you've basically, you know, finished up. Oh, wow. They are crossing <laughs> fingers, guys. Um, you've basically finished up part three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what has been different with this, with the evolution of the show? Because we've kind of talked about mm -hmm. this first scene where you're running through the woods in a nightgown um, and just running from your fate. But now you literally, like, Sabrina's got some serious daddy issues. Yeah, major, um, some would say. And now you know the truth. Like, yeah. now the characters all kind of know the truth. It's out in the open. Everyone knows Sabrina's a witch and the devil's child. Um, what has been different? What was different in filming this new part that was coming out for y'all? It was honestly so nice just being back because I feel like we know each other so well now that yeah. the set feels even more comfortable. And the crew, too. Yeah, everyone. Everyone just works together so well. It kind of feels like we're all making this thing. It kind of feels like college to me because I never went to college, so this kind of feels like my college experience in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But as far as the actual show goes, I feel like... The first part was very much so, no one knows the full truth. And then everyone found out, and that's the second part. And the third part is kind of the aftermath. For sure. Yeah. yeah. There you go. And it feels like a very necessary sort of direction. And yeah. we've got three more sets this year. We've got a lot, lot of new characters. A lot of new, really fun characters, which is really fun too so it's kind of a whole different world this year in a lot of ways mm -hmm. everything's changed yeah if you could sum up this new part in one word what would it be mm. spicy <laughs> <laughs> spicy hot hot i mean you are going definitely to hell. spicy i mean yeah, you're going to hell so it's yeah, gonna be hell's hot. hot yeah 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 hell's is is hot well, there's, in more there, ways there, than one, yeah. There, that, is, that is the biggest difference, for sure, is, is, is hell. Yeah. yeah. You're going to be doing some hell raising. That's right. Most I had death. to use it. I love a good pun. <laughs> Most <laughs> Sorry. So if you had one word, Ross, what would you say? Um, hell. Yeah, probably. Honestly, oh, come though. on, guys. <laughs> if I, um, no, I always like the word, I mean, it, I kind of like the word juicy for Sabrina mm. because... It's it's like it's like you're you know um, what's the what's the phrase it's um what's the phrase that delectable yeah like oh. you know all those words that are like it's just the right Satisfying. amount of wrong there's a lot of food words that are being used yeah. right now I'm, I'm just hungry spicy I'm hungry as hell delectable <laughs> I'm so That's ready good. for juicy lunch. That was good. is there more cannibalism is there something y'all are not <laughs> telling me. 
Maybe. No, I just feel like this show has just like the perfect amount of wrong in it, where it's like, ooh, I, I got, you know what I mean? Naughty? Like it's Yeah, it's like sexy, and it's like, it's got hell in it, but it's also got good things, and it's got good relationships, and... You've literally told them everything and nothing. You've done your job. I've been doing this for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know all the fans out there are going to be looking forward to an, a really incredible new part of Sabrina and just the continuing of this work. Before we leave, my last question, is there anything else? Obviously, you've got music coming out. Kiernan, is there anything else that fans should be looking for from you on the horizon? It's not time. What? What's that? Oh, yeah, I got a movie coming out called Let It yeah, Snow. Let It Snow. November 8th. Yeah, it's fun. It's, um, I'm it's a Netflix it. movie. It's a Netflix movie. Um, John Green, who's a cool writer that I'm sure some of you guys know, wrote a book uh, called Let It Snow, and a bunch of us did a movie about, about it, and it's kind of like a, it's like a modern, um, modern love, actually, in a lot of ways, uh, and it's really, really, really cute and really, really, really fun, and that comes out in November, so I'm excited about that. And there we have it. Thank yeah. you so much. Thanks.